I want to get to that next level of grasping, the vo staying more into the vortex. What would you recommend? I feel that I'm ready to push myself, or maybe I'm not using the right words, but to go into that next level. Well, everything that we're talking about here today is about that. Let's just talk about how much you know, and then we will apply the next step in a really powerful way here. So the first thing that you must acknowledge is that this is a vibrational universe and that you are vibrational and that you are an extension of a very powerful, very pure, very non-resistant, very source energy vibration that you are source an extension of source next you must understand you must be willing to think about it often until it is a thought that you own it is something that you don't just want to believe it's not just something that you believe it's something that you know that you know for sure that well-being does abound that source energy is powerful and good and focused to you and everyone else all the time and that how you feel in any moment is about how much of that you're allowing yourself to receive in any moment in time so when you see people hurting or angry or pinched off just understand that for whatever reason they got a vibration going on that is preventing them from being in the receptive mode but the offering mode is always 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 there no one's being left out of this so as you acknowledge that everyone has the opportunity to relax and find reception then it makes it easier for you to find your uplifting part in first finding the reception mode for yourself for your own benefit and then for the benefit of the clarity of the example that it provides for anyone else so over time we've talked to you in lots of different ways to try to bring you up to speed with something that isn't utterly apparent to you because you are translating vibrations so well you don't even realize that you're doing it so we began making a series of statements and then backing them up with whole books to support them and the first notion is that law of attraction is the most powerful law in the universe and that it is activated all the time and that it is responding to you in every waking moment and then next we began saying that you can be a deliberate creator you're usually not you're usually creating by default because you're usually thinking thoughts all over the place you're usually not paying attention to what you're thinking about you're usually giving whatever's loudest or most evident in your experience most active most around you most already manifested that's what you're usually giving your attention to but it doesn't have to be that way next we began explaining to you that since you are an extension of source energy that that source energy part of you is calling you into alignment all the time we began talking about going with the flow of going in the direction of what is easier not going against it not going against the current but going with the current and then we began talking about how the life that you're living has caused you to create a vibrational reality that is vivid and real it is the precursor to all good things that you are asking for but that you've got to be in the receptive mode before you begin translating the vibration of that into what you call real life experience and so today if you're asking for something from us that on top of everything else that we've been giving you and on top of so much that you are already understanding and applying the thing that we want most for you to take away from this gathering is that well-being is unless you're doing something to keep it from being in this moment that to the degree that you are allowing yourself to feel ease to the degree that you are allowing yourself to acknowledge well-being that well-being will demonstrate itself all around you so if we were talking to most humans who haven't been listening to us at all who just took us from someone else's point of view and accepted that we are in a position to know things about the well-being that you speak and about the well-being that you seek without being willing to take the time to understand the vibrational platform these are the things that we would say in terms of doing 
This is what we would do if we were standing in your physical shoes. We would stop introducing ourselves to the problems of the world. We would stop looking for trouble. We would stop looking for trouble in order to justify solutions that we are trying to discover to fix the problem. We would stop watching that continuous spewing of cable news. We would stop warning our children about things. We would stop being guarded ourselves. We would no longer be problem oriented. We would be solution oriented. We would look for reasons to feel good instead of reasons to feel bad. We would no longer justify why we are where we are to anyone. We wouldn't attempt to explain anything to anyone. We would accept that everyone has their own unique point of view, their own unique point of view and relationship between them and what they have become. And we would accept that there just aren't enough words in the world to make them understand completely what our point of view is. And so we wouldn't spend any time trying to convince them. It would no longer matter to us what anybody else thinks about our plan of action because they aren't really going to understand it anyway. We would no longer put our nose in other people's business and try to control the things that they're doing we would accept and this is what we're leading up to this is the new piece that we're leading up to that we really want you to feel and practice we would accept that attention to the conditions as they stand is the primary reason that we are disallowing ourselves alignment with who we really are and so full access to that infinite intelligence so we would make a decision to be more unconditional in the way that we are approaching life. So here it is with all of that said, we would start right now to identify by the way we feel. And you have so many conscious resources to help you know this. We would be looking for the path of least resistance in everything that we are doing because the path of least resistance is the path of most allowance most allowance of who we are so what that means is we would no longer attempt the impossible which is to carve out or apply or administer or dictate or control anyone else's path of least resistance we would no longer make decisions based upon what's best for someone else every single time we would make decisions based upon one thing and one thing only how does that affect my alignment for example let's say that your daughter is wanting to do something what's something that she does that you don't want her to do there's a few <laughs> Just pick the um, one that bothers you the most. She's currently dating someone. <laughs> I know. What I <laughs> Which she actually told me that. All right, we the, get it. The characteristics that he has, she really didn't want it at the beginning, but she gave him a chance. That's one of the things. All right. So from her own mouth, mm -hmm. she has acknowledged yep. that this is not the person that she really wants to be with. Correct. But she has decided that she's going to be with him anyway, at Regardless. least for now. Yeah, for now. At least for now. Mm -hmm. So from your point of view, she is demonstrating to you not good judgment. So what you are attempting to do is to help her find the path of least resistance by explaining things to her that only life will teach her mm -hmm. by explaining things to her that you're not really even demonstrating hundred percent of the time by trying to use words by trying to use control by trying to somehow wrestle to the ground her point of resistance mm -hmm. her path of least resistance and what we want you to feel with this is how hard that is, you know, yes. because you've been trying it mm -hmm. and it's ended up causing problems between you and your partner too. 
Now, let's just think about what the path of least resistance is for you. So the path of least resistance for you isn't about anybody else's behavior it's about your alignment. So we're just going to ask some questions of you. Now we have this basis laid here and you tell us what feels like the path of least resistance to you. So barricading her in her room. Does that feel like we'll give you choices <laughs> barricading her in her room or letting her come and go as she pleases. What feels like the path of least resistance? letting her go telling her everything you know about relationships or allowing her time to have some experiences which feels like the path of least resistance allowing her to we're still a bit more in the action part of it than we mean to be but it's sort of where you are and you have to start wherever you are you can't just jump to a new place get her mother to see your point of view or give it a rest <laughs> give it a rest <laughs> take this young man aside and lay down the rules to him <laughs> or realize that like your daughter he's not having that much of you either the second one yeah <sighs> worrying about your daughter or trusting your daughter what's the path of least resistance trusting her. anticipating things going terribly wrong or giving her credit for having some sensibility what's the path of least resistance giving her credit that's smoothed out pretty well isn't it so now let's take it further let's see how much resistance actually did dissipate um, she is the creator of her own reality I am the creator of her own reality she is a creator of God. In order to get good at something, you practice it not at all, or you practice it every day. Practice it every day. Um, she will come into her knowing with me watching every step she takes, or with me stepping back and trusting that she knows what she's doing. Yeah, by stepping back. I have an inner being. My daughter does not. <laughs> My daughter has an inner being. My desire is to do what I can to help her feel her own guidance or do what I can to be her guidance. No, allow her to be her own guidance. Do what I can to encourage her guidance. I encourage her guidance through trust or skepticism. I encourage her alignment through positive expectation or fear-based thought. We're going to play with you. Her mother has good instinct about this. Her mother has bad instinct about this. This isn't about me being right or her mother being right this is about both of us wanting her to stand in a place of her own guidance more questions her mother or i expect to be with her in every decision she makes forevermore she's on her own and has been for a while about the majority of the decisions she makes it's natural that she make her own decisions. It's natural that she is her own point of attraction. It's natural that she follow her own instincts. It's natural that she has some contrast in her own life that helps her to identify what she wants. It's natural that she knows some of what she doesn't want so that she knows some of what she does want. It's natural that she has created her own vortex. It's natural that she's created her own vibrational reality. It's natural that her own inner being knows who she is. It's natural that her own inner being knows who she is and loves her. It's natural that her inner being is calling her toward what she is wanting I want her to be called by her own inner being more than by me I trust her inner being more than I trust me her inner being 100% of the time is in her vortex calling her toward what she wants sometimes I'm not in my vortex when I lay down the law I'm often out of alignment it's right for her to listen to something that's coming forth from within rather than something that is being demanded of her. Her instincts are on target.